One thing that took me many years to realize, even after years of dating and approaching women, was that the highest archetype, the highest personality in terms of attractiveness is not the strongest guy and it's not even the the bad boy or the charismatic guy necessarily the highest level of personal attractiveness attractiveness is actually wisdom so what does that mean while i was growing up uh, i was under the societal impression that people who are attractive are you know the beautiful celebrities people who have really good looks and money and you know just the, the the stuff is what makes them this is actually very ironic since you eventually realize that people who are wise often have material abundance and physical and mental fitness but it's not the things themselves that make them attractive but the characteristics that they embody as people people also confuse the idea of being attractive with being novel or short term interesting so when i say attractive When I say attractive, I don't mean something that looks good at the moment and again, it's novel, so it, you know, you get interested in it for a short while and then that interest disappears. Uh, you know, kind of like chocolate. <laughs> like you eat a bit and then you're like, "Okay, I don't want to get near that for <laughs> the next few hours at least." What I mean is something that that is consistently attractive and interesting over the long run so something that you won't just use and get rid of but will keep actively engaging you engaging you sorry and never stop challenging you and get you drawn to it and keep coming back so that's the kind of attractive that I'm talking about and it's it's actually again wisdom it's being smart now people confuse that with intelligence there are a lot of really intelligent people like high 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 IQ that are actually very foolish and not wise and lack maturity so that's not the type of intelligence that i mean i don't mean how good are you at IQ tests or with a math problem the kind of intelligence and wisdom that i'm talking about is your ability to adapt to your environment to quickly learn to scale up dominance hierarchies meaning you know how to become the best at something because again you learn extremely fast and you know how to implement it's your ability to think critically all of those combined make you the most attractive person both to specifically to females and also generally as a person because people are attracted to those who have the potential to climb up dominance ladders which means they have the potential or they already are the best at their various fields when specifically i'm talking about women here but when specifically people see in you that you have that ability to adapt and change and improve yourself extremely fast and efficiently they intuitively know that you're like an investment you're a person who is going to keep growing at an extremely fast pace and everyone wants to be on that ride it's a lot more efficient to be aligned with someone who's not yet that successful but quickly climbing up with ravage enthusiasm and wisdom then aligning yourself with someone who is already successful but stagnating and 
kind of sitting still and just sitting on what he has. And that's why wisdom, again, is the most attractive characteristic of them all. Wisdom and the ability to make sense of the world and adapt quickly. If you look at the truly successful people, and when I mean the truly successful, what I mean is the people who have the money, who have the charisma, who have the women, who have the cars, who are philanthropic, they help other people, and just live the amazing life. All of them read a ton of books. All of them are highly industrious, entrepreneurial. These are people that spent their life improving themselves and honing themselves until they became those people that are like kind of like celebrities, but it's not that Hollywood as has uh, raised them. They actually stand on their own. They don't need to appease the masses. They don't need to, uh, you know, be on the Hollywood agenda. They don't need to have somebody prop them up. They represent themselves and build themselves up. Again, think of your favorite YouTube channels, your most, the people you admire the most, who have the best lives and surround, are surrounded by the best people with the most abundant resources. These are all self-made people that the main characteristic they share in common is, again, their ability to quickly adapt and learn and ravage hunger for growth and knowledge. And you'll see that. You'll see that, again, if specifically if you're a guy. And the reason for that is that women evolutionarily, they generally mate with men who are on their level or higher in terms of dominance, meaning, you know, it might mean different things in different contexts, but what it usually means is status, so success. But, you know, there's a, geek, a group of geeks uh, for them, status could mean the guy who's the best video gamer. But, you know, and for uh, athletes, it could mean the most athletically fit person. But generally, uh, in terms of group dominance, it's someone who's wise and learns quickly and is able to adapt is going to dominate any environment that he goes into based on that fact. So when you talk to a woman and she sees that in you, she sees that you are inquisitive and quick learning, very keen and wise, she will automatically start smiling and being really interested in talking to you. This is something that I've noticed, especially as I got wiser, that the more keen for knowledge I became, the more quickly I became to adapting, to, to learning and improving myself and making the right choices the more people suddenly started to trust me, offer me help, and want to be around me. Because people start viewing you as the father, as the, the one that helps the men make the right decisions and protects the women. Again, that's from a mythical and evolutionary perspective. So... Wisdom matters, <laughs> and being smart really matters. Being a philosopher matters. Being ethical matters. So pick up that book that you know you should be reading. You know, pick up the habit of reading for three hours a day at least. 
today, my biggest ambitions are things like speaking eloquently and using the most precise words I can use to share my ideas and transfer them into other people's minds because language is extremely important. That's the way I'm communicating with you. Things like knowing my weaknesses and studying things that actually make me feel bad because that's where the unknown is. That's where growth usually is. It comes with time and it comes with age. But if you're over 20, by now you should start developing a system of how the world works based on you, of kind of a foundation of philosophy of life. And it's not going to change very much as you grow older, but you need to start building on top of it. So whatever assumptions you have right now, start going against them. Start actually seeking information that contradicts your point. Because the more you find out how much you don't know, the smarter you become exponentially. The, the, the faster you realize that there's an infinite amount of knowledge out there that you know not the tiniest bit of, how, of the totality of knowledge, the, the quicker you realize that whatever your opinion is, it's wrong and the reason it's wrong is because you think it's a fact and you've never studied the other side you just really like that side of yours and you know that because you think that your side is definitely correct so pick up a book about something that goes completely against what you believe that disgusts you and notice how the quote-unquote opponent actually makes pretty good points as well. And I don't just mean any of your opponents. I mean, pick the smartest one. So it's extremely profitable to grow your wisdom. And I don't have any more words currently to articulate for how and why you should start now if you haven't. I hope this video helps you. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And I'd love you to go on a coaching call with me. It's free for a limited time. So just go to the link below and sign up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, here's your chance to. So I'll talk to you very soon.